Guys, The Division was a game that I think all of us was hyped for. It launched and then it pretty much shat itself right after launch once we realized that there was pretty much no end game. The game has improved though since then. Multiple sandbox patches has continued to refine the game and to me what I've gotten from the Division 2 beta is the ultimate refined version of the Division 1. So some key things to look forward in today's video. Number one we're going to talk about the eight man raid that is going to be included in the Division 2. We're going to talk about its PvP system. No it's not just the dark zone now. You can actually go head to head 4v4 and probably even more than that once the actual game was released. Right now we only got to play skirmish. But the main thing to take away from that is Ubisoft has a multiplayer designed and ready for us when the Division 2 launches. We're also going to talk about Dark Zone today and what things have changed in the Dark Zone, enemy AI and how much it has changed since the Division 1. My god has it gotten a lot more intelligent. We're also going to talk about bullet sponges, which is not actually even bullet sponges anymore because that was like the big thing back in the Division 1. It was like, oh man, this bullet sponge, how is this even realistic? I get it, I understand. Doesn't really make sense to just sit there and pumping ammo and something. Now though it actually makes sense because there's a plate armor system at work here, which is pretty cool. We're also gonna talk about weapons and armor, how that's gonna play a role in terms of in game. And of course I'll give you my opinion of how far that in game will stretch. To be honest with you guys, it looks endless at this point. So many different builds from what I'm seeing right here, even at base level. That's right, you can actually start doing builds way before you even reach level cap. And last but not least, we're going to talk about the Divisions 2 optimization and its visuals. How well the game was running, how it feels, and what the purpose is of the Division. What is Ubisoft trying to do with this game? How does this looter shooter separate itself from other video games that are coming out, especially since we have Anthem that will be launching this month? There's got to be something here that Division 2 brings to the table that separates itself from games like Destiny and Anthem. So first up, let's talk about those eight man raids. Yes, there will be eight of you doing some sort of high level in game activity. Now, as far as I know, I don't think we've seen anything on this, like what exactly this in game activity is going to consist of. Is there going to be matchmaking for this raid? And will the raid actually require all eight people? Or could you get away with doing it with like six or five or however many? I'm sure somebody out there is going to be crazy enough to try to solo it. Now, if the raid does does have matchmaking that also presents some challenges right getting matched up with people that don't know what they're doing does the raid have a large amount of mechanics involved those are the things that can really stump a team of blueberries that just matches up together right but hey man it's all about the challenge and i'm down with that moving on to pvp now i don't know how many people are picking up the division 2 for pvp but i have like mixed feelings on the current skirmish playlist that i got to play with today there was moments that i was just absolutely infuriated with the playlist I was so mad I was getting shut down every time I made a move I was just getting wrecked and then there was other times when I just got the crispy flank and I just went in on a team with a double barrel shotgun which was a really nasty weapon I named her Betty and I hope to find her again when the game launches now correct me if I'm wrong I don't believe there was any type of multiplayer in the division one outside of the dark zone again guys it's been a minute since I played the division one but for those out there that carry some sort of murderous intent multiplayer will provide that and considering how immersive the division is alongside being realistic yeah kind of makes you feel good when you kill somebody now moving on to the dark zone dark zone kind of feels the same as it did in division one but i felt like there was more stuff to do i found something that i just started like pressing buttons on and it was like telling me to go to another place and another place and it was just this nice little cookie trail and before i know it i got some loot and it really didn't take a lot of work out of me i just had to kill something at the end and that was about it now something that did seem different from the division one was that you actually have to go rogue intentionally I don't know how it is for other people, but on PC, I had to press like shift and T. I think that's the right sequence of buttons. But this indicated that I was down to pound. Or more specifically, I was down to get pounded by everything around me. So be careful when you press those buttons and don't stand next to the turrets. Other than that though, the dark zone works just like it did before. You go in there, you get some loot. It's got some icky icky on it. You gotta get it off though 
you lift it off into a helicopter, they give all your weapons and armor that you just looted a bath, and you pick it up as you leave the dark zone. Now, honestly, it was pretty calm for the most part. Walking around the dark zone, not much is happening, but the moment you try to get your armor or weapons out of there and you call that helicopter forward, that's when all hell breaks loose. Everybody wants your booty. So where Dark Zone stands out from regular multiplayer is that it brings a level of chaos that you just can't predict. Now moving on, enemy AI. Oh yeah, this impressed me so much. Now I don't know how much the Division 1 has improved in its enemy AI, but way back when I remember shooting things in the face and they would just literally stand there and watch me and talk to me. I mean, just talking mad smack and I'm just laying it on them. Now the enemy AI does continue to talk smack, but they're kind of juking you, right? They're rolling. And it's really hard to hit one with a grenade. I don't know about you guys, but for me, every time I threw a grenade, they barrel rolled out of there in a heartbeat, which honestly resulted in me applauding them. I thought it was quite talented to see the enemy AI thinking. And the Division 2's AI so far, they are definitely thinking more, reacting better. So I was honestly really impressed with the enemy AI. Now granted, there was a few times, yes, where the enemy would just stand there and get shot up. Again, another Division 1 situation, talking mad smack and just taking bullets to the face. But that definitely seemed to be more rare here. Which takes us to point number five. Bullet sponges, are they a thing? Not really. Back in the Division 1, we always had issues with shooting something thing over and over again and even though it was supposed to represent a shield it just didn't make sense now everything or at least the elites i guess that's what we call them have this plate armor which is pretty cool because you're shooting and you're like oh my god is he invincible no you just got to keep shooting it and then as soon as the plate armor breaks it's when you melt them now i'm not sure if the plate armor regenerates i don't even think there's any visual indication if it even has a health meter all i know is that you need to just lay on that trigger like your mama taught you right and pray to god that plate armor is gonna break before he busts the cap off in you i really like the system guys it's more realistic it adds to the immersion which let's be frank here guys that's what the division 2 is trying to bring us that high level realistic immersion. Moving on to weapons and armor builds. I think the most noticeable difference is that the system overall in terms of builds are gone from what it was back in the Division 1. See, in the Division 1, at least from what I remember, you had like firearms, stamina, and electronics. And depending on how much of your armor was stacked in building that up, would provide yourself with certain perks on your weapons. It would unlock them and allow you to utilize those perks. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was never a genius at figuring out the best builds. I was quite the blueberry, okay? And for whatever reason, the Division 2 doesn't seem to present those same build mechanics. That doesn't mean there's not builds present, but there's not your normal firearm, stamina, and electronics. You guys let me know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I really don't know. What I am a fan of, though, are the weapons and the armors all having a play way before you even reach in-game. Even though those common armor pieces have little details there that are bumping up crit damage values, health, and some of those values are actually hurting you. Some of the armor pieces I got will give you like a bonus that's helping you and a negative bonus that's hurting you, which really makes me wonder how much of the in-game gear could possibly roll with negative bonuses, which is kind of crazy, right? If you're trying to grind for that that one item that's like super rare you finally get it and it has a negative bonus on it be kind of a letdown but at the same time i really don't know what the drop rates are are these items going to be more accessible and the actual grind is not necessarily for the item itself but for the rolls on that item again maybe some of our division veterans in here could let us know Either way it goes though the end game in terms of weapons and armor builds seem endless I mean, absolutely endless from all aspects, whether you're just running through PVE, whether you're wanting to design everything for PVP. And of course, we're not even talking about the perks designed for activities in the dark zone, which I'm going to go out on a limb and say there's probably going to be perks just like that targeting the raid activities as well as other in-game activities too. So overall, the builds to me seem endless, which really results in the most hardcore players constantly being able to refine themselves over and over again. Now, with all of those things said, let's talk about the Division 2's optimization and visuals. So first up, I want to talk about the visuals. Washington, D.C. is huge. I mean, humongous. I actually read on PC Gamer not too long ago that Washington, D.C. will be 20% bigger than Manhattan was from the Division 1. Now, that's great and all. It's bigger. It's visually stunning but is there a lot of stuff to do yeah you still got the same side missions i also like the territory controls that you have to do which really just means you go into this area you shoot up a flare pretty damn gangster i'm not gonna lie 
But even outside of that, you have all these different settlement points outside of your base that has like these little sub quests for them to like unlock things. Maybe it's like a crafting recipe, maybe a signature move. I don't know. I really don't know how far it can go. All I know is there's a reason to visit everywhere and do everything, which truly goes above and beyond in rewarding those out there that are just hardcore completionists. Now, as far as the Divisions 2's optimization, how did the game perform? Was everything working smoothly? Well, for the first day, I was getting kicked off the server for a number of times. Now, I'm not going to get really hung up on that, guys. With any game, especially when you have so many people trying to get on the server, that's just gonna happen. Hopefully that won't be an issue when the game launches. Just like Anthem a few weeks ago during its demo and nobody could get on for like the first 12 hours. I think they can get away with that, but not when the game launches itself. You gotta work through those things. The other thing that I didn't like was the sound. There was a lot of times I was just shooting and my guns made no noise. Don't know what the issue is with that. Little bizarre. Hopefully those things get fixed before the game ships out in March. Either way it goes though, guys, The Division 2, I was impressed this weekend. For the people out there that are looking for a hardcore, like a truly hardcore looter shooter, I think The Division 2 will definitely be that game for you. At the same time, if you're looking for a game to run around, to wall climb, to have these superhuman powers, that's not what The Division 2 is trying to present here. It's real. It's truly trying to go for immersion here and from the opening credits it grounds me because i felt like a division agent more than i ever felt like one back in division one and i'm not trying to like crap on the narrative from the division one i think the presentation just wasn't there at least when the game launched where the division two is trying to go with this you feel whatever you're going up against are actually elite soldiers so guys that is my overview and my review so far of the division two from its beta for my veteran players out there, there is so much I probably could have covered, but the experience on my end is just not there yet. I haven't played a division in a really long time. This is just what I got from this weekend, but I can't wait to sink my hands in this game and really see the end game for myself, especially that eight man rate. Now, before I let you go today, guys, shout out to my supporters over on Patreon. We just added a couple more yesterday. Thank you guys so much for the huge support. It really helps this channel out, and I thank you all so much. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming in. And watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right